Do you, do you know what these are? Capezzoli di Venere. Nipples of Venus. <gasps> They're Roman chestnuts in brandied sugar. Try one. Mm. <laughs> They're wonderful. Hey there, folks. Welcome to a very special episode of Binging with Babish, where I'm joined by Max Miller of Tasting History. Thank you so much for coming on, man. Thanks for having me. So excited to be here. So what are we making today? Today we are making Capezzoli di Venere. Or what the hell is that? Nipples of Venus. Nipples of Venus from Amadeus. From Amadeus. One of my favorite movies. I have seen it so many times, I practically have it memorized. It's one of my favorites, filled with historical characters, historical inaccuracies sometimes, but overall it's just a wonderful portrait of, of those characters and, and of the time period and of the music and in some cases of the food. Absolutely, delicious looking movie, especially the nipples of Venus, which are, what, what are the nipples of Venus? So the nipples of Venus from that time period, we don't really know what was in it. There aren't any, uh, any recipes from the 18th century. Oh. Probably a marzipan based confection. Mm. Uh, Salieri was known to have quite sweet tooth, loved baked goods, loved sweets, but in the movie, it's shown, it's, it's very clear that they're covered in like a white chocolate. Yeah. White chocolate didn't, didn't really exist at that time. Oh, salacious. I know. But that's okay because we're gonna make it with the white chocolate anyway because the goal here is to make it look like the movie version of yeah. The Nipples of Venus. We'll go into them. So I believe in, in the movie, Salieri says that they are brandied chestnuts. Mm. And basically that's what we're gonna be doing. So it's chestnuts, with brandy and sugar and butter, just made into a wonderfully sweet truffle. And then that's covered with the white chocolate with just a dot of dark chocolate for the nipple. Now that's a nipple we can all suck on. <laughs> <laughs> so first thing we gotta do is make the brandied chestnut filling, right? Yes. So what are we doing there? Super easy. Okay. Just take the chestnuts. Just take the chestnuts. And we we blend them. You could you could chop them really, really fine, but really you're looking for a, a mush. Yeah. Uh, because you wanna make it as smooth as possible so that when you do put that white chocolate on top, it's nice and smooth and you don't have lumpy boobs. So we're... The, uh, so, okay, let me grab the food processor. All right. I should point out just to those curious that um, this particular make and model of food processor did not exist back <laughs> then. Uh, and anything else going in here? At the Which moment, one? no. Oh, just, okay. So just, Mush. let's just blitz them to death, get them as smooth as possible. Oh, here you go. Look at that. See, that's, that was period accurate. That would, that's <laughs> what would have no happened. There's electricity. Yeah. Good. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that'll yeah, be, yeah, that'll yeah, be yeah, a mush. Yeah. I love chestnut. Mm. Tastes just like chestnuts. This is crazy. <laughs> then we should actually probably melt the chocolate because it does okay. need to have time to cool. All right. So I'm going to get this melting. That probably won't be compelling content. So we'll see you guys in a bit. So, okay, this guy needs to cool off before we add him to the, to the chestnuts. So then we can start uh, creaming together the butter and sugar. Creaming together the butter and sugar, likewise something we're gonna use a machine for. Uh, yeah, so we'll start with the butter and the sugar, and then we can actually just mix everything else together. I wonder how they would have done this back in the day. By hand, with a birch whisk. Wow, that was accurate and expensive looking. There it is. That's probably good. Yeah? Yeah. All right. We got some nice fluffy sugar and butter. Let's add in the chestnuts first. Let's do it. And then we'll add in all the liquids. We can do the salt, the salt. vanilla, and the brandy. A little bit of booze in a sweet is, is so nice. Wonderful. Just, like, you're not getting drunk off these things. It's like a quarter of a teaspoon in each one, but yeah. like, just enough to get a little bite. And it is so easy to overdo it though, and okay. then they become like boozy. boozy. Yeah, just, if, if you're eating these and they're burning, you did it wrong. Yeah. If you're eating nipples and they're burning, <laughs> you're doing it too hard. There's a cream for that. And now chocolate to this? I can't wait to eat this by the spoonful. Right? Well, and honestly, if you don't like white chocolate, this is the end of your process. And you know who likes white chocolate? Nobody. Oh, I like white you chocolate. You like white chocolate? I do like white chocolate. You mean you like hardened cocoa butter? Right? Yeah. Should we try it? Let's do it. Mmm. Mm. Just enough booze. Just enough booze, where it's just like, it's just present. Not too sweet. That, that is very period appropriate, because if you look at desserts in the 1700s, they're never as sweet as uh, we're used to today. 
So then we just Sorry. we scoop these and make them into little little balls, but they can have a, a flat bottom. All right. Yeah. Those, are, those look like boobs. What other boob-shaped foods are there? That, that are like intentionally. No, I guess there are none. That's a dumb question. No, Never there mind. are a ton. What? There's actually, it was like a really popular thing back in, going all the way back to the Middle Ages, but especially in the 18th, 19th century to have um, breast and uh, phallic shaped foods. And they're often named after like saints, like <laughs> the breasts of Saint Cecilia. I don't know that that's one of them, but all over Italy and France and Germany, Spain. They had those and other even more grotesque things like uh, Tell me. nuns farts or ah. farts of a whore. Oh, yeah. what are farts of a whore? What are nuns farts? Tell me everything. So these were similar to a profiterole. Oh. It's like a puff of air trapped inside of pastry. Oh, that's, see that's clever. And depending on what they put with these, then you've got the nun's farts. Yeah, people, oh, man. people in the past were nasty. I was about I'm just to say, saying. People think that th this is like a, a nasty uh, time yeah. to be alive. No, people no. were nasty always. Always people nasty. We're always gross. Okay, so we have our, um, what would you call these? Um, breasts of Venus. Breasts of Venus. We're gonna turn them into nipples. Uh, freezer. Yeah. Freezer, okay. So, Kendall was kind enough to melt this for us. Lovely. Uh, to a temperature of, it's now at like 94 degrees Fahrenheit. So we want to bring it down, take it down a notch to our level um, by adding some seed chocolate. Yeah, we're gonna temper it. That's how you, um, the, uh, click link here if, uh, if you want to see how to temper chocolate. I, I don't have the time to show you right now. And the only thing is if you don't get it tempered, it still works. Yeah. They're just not as pretty. They're, they're like matte. And nipples what, yeah. rather than shiny, glossy nipples. You want shiny, glossy nipples. Right. right? Yeah. A dull nipple tempted no one. Okay. Let's start dropping them in. Let's, let's do this. I didn't think this through. It's going to be hard for me to put these over here. <laughs> I'm figuring out now what the bottom is. Yeah. Yeah, you lose track of it in there. My boobs are not the cleanest and nicest, but, the, but hey, that's how I like them. These look like they did in the movie, though. They weren't like perfect in the they movie. They were not perfect yeah. in the movie. And I am above, I'm about accuracy above all else. So exactly. that's why we did it. That's why they look this way. And you can't prove it otherwise. <laughs> looks yeah. good, that looks good. There we go. I'll, I'll, I'll right. I'm calling it. That's plenty of boobs. Yes. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, there you go, sorry, there you go. Now we need to put nipples on. Yes. Little dark nipples. Oh, bigger nipples or smaller nipples? Bigger nipples. All right. <laughs> like dinner plates. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> let's try one. This one's the least beautiful, so. Yeah, let's start. We need practice. Where's my ugliest titties? Oh, that is hard to nail. There we go. That, that yep. That's my shining boob. Oh, I'm very proud of these, these boobs. Yeah. I wasn't before, but now they've come home to roost. All right. Nipples of Venus. Nipples of Venus. Shall we try one? We shall. I'm gonna go ahead and eat this as unprovocatively as possible. And I'm serious. <laughs> no, don't, I'm not gonna do it. Mmm. Mmm. That's delightful. It is. They're rich. And it tastes hundreds of years old. This <laughs> tastes like history. I swear to God. Tasting history, it's all about. It's what it's all about. Check out Tasting History on YouTube, even though I'm sure you already do. I'm sure you guys are already subscribed there, right guys? I hope. Yes. Well, I'm out of nipple puns, so we should probably bring this to an end. Max, thank you so much for coming through and showing me how to make thank you. said nipples of Venus. It was fun. Go check out Tasting History with Max Miller on YouTube, and... Watch Amadeus. And watch Amadeus. Yeah, no, it's a great movie. Um, that's it, bang bang. No one's gonna eat a nipple provocatively. No one. <clears throat> I was also there you go, Brad. Thing. I don't wanna. Come on. I don't wanna. Come on. The people want it. <laughs> there you go.